You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Ariel Mirendorf of Fitness by Ariel. Ariel, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. That is fantastic. So Fitness by Ariel, we're talking is January 2019, yep. and I imagine either your phone is ringing off the hook from a bunch of people that are making promises that yep. they expect to break in about a month or two. <laughs> That's right. Or um, maybe people already signed up in December and they're getting ready for the promises they're going to break. So let's get started there. How about you tell us what you do? Sure. Yeah, I primarily focus on personal training, both Mm -hmm. one-on-one training, partner training, and small group training. Sure. And I'm also a group fitness instructor, so I also kind of bop around teaching different types of fitness classes. I teach some yoga, I teach some spin class, and um, other kind of boot camp classes. Okay. That's pretty diverse then. It's diverse. And then um, my newest venture is running a fitness and wellness retreat, Mm -hmm. um, which I ran for the first time last year, and we're looking forward to running it for two weeks. Nice. So. Very cool. Kind of our big project. Nice. Yeah. So let's talk about the retreat a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that around here? The retreat is not. It's in Montana. Okay. Uh, It's in northwestern Montana on a little herb farm called Spirit Works Herb Farm. Oh, weird. Okay. I had worked there, um, volunteered there on her farm previously in the past, so we have a good relationship with the owner of the farm. That's kind of how we got linked up with them. Sure. And so um, my good friend and I, who's a, she's a massage therapist and I'm mm-hmm. a fitness gal, and so together we um, kind of have a holistic approach to fitness and wellness. And nice. we go hiking and um, enjoy the enjoy the big sky country. Sure, so, cool. Yeah. I'm going to move this a little bit. Yeah. So uh, you, she's got massage, you got fitness, so essentially you just abuse them and then she helps them recover? Is that the idea? <laughs> kind of. Um, so last year was our first year, so we actually learned a lot running it the first year, and um, we like for people to kind of make it their own thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think for the most part, people are just excited to be off of sure. work and I relax. Bet. And so some people prefer more like the meditation, the yoga, and mm-hmm. they'll have more opportunity to do that. But then there's also the opportunity to work out once or twice a day that's a little bit more. Um, it could be high intensity, but sure. I kind of cater to all levels as well. Gotcha. So um, it's a little bit of everything. We have a... a a chef on site that cooks all you of really our, mm-hmm. holy cow so she's going to cook all of our food from um food on the farm for okay. the most part so all the veggies are harvested on wow. site all the eggs are from the um the chickens that live there on the farm and, okay um then we take people to glacier national park usually oh very uh, cool somewhere around mm-hmm. that area to go hiking yeah it's beautiful up there mm-hmm. huh mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah, it's beautiful so how did you end up uh, one, coming up with this retreat thing, two, getting the partners, and then three, figuring out exactly where you were going to have it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I've always wanted to run some sort of camp or retreats or even as a kid. Like, I mm-hmm. loved organizing people okay. and organizing things and coming mm-hmm. up with, like, three-day plans or one-week plans. Uh-huh. What do we do every day? And sure. Um, so it's always been a goal of mine to mm-hmm. do that. Um, And my friend and I, we work really well together. We're kind of like the perfect partnership where we both have different things we're good at. I Mm -hmm. I always say she's like more organized and I'm more like stream of consciousness (laughs) person. (laughs) But we really complete each other in that Mm -hmm. way, I think. And um, so her and I, it was like the perfect fit. And she's the one who I worked with on the farm. So between the three of us, the farm owner, um, it was kind of a perfect fit as to where we would run it. Mm -hmm. And then as for finding our partners, um, we try to stick with as local as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, One, because it's cheaper for us to hire someone who's local. And um, we like to support local business. And um, Mm -hmm. growing up in a family that runs a small local business, we Mm -hmm. really value being able to support other small local businesses. So we found a yoga teacher who's local. Um, This year we're looking to hire an herbalist and a naturopath to run a few of the workshops. Okay. And so... Um, while we're kind of the overseers and I do fitness, she does the massage. We have other people come in to offer different oh, um, okay. self-healing classes sure. and um, different meditations or workshops. Sure. So. Huh. That's awesome. Yeah. That takes a lot of putting together. And you're putting something together when it's halfway across the country, right? Right. Yeah. So it was interesting kind of starting the business this year because the – address i think the address we used to start it was in arizona the address where we run 
run the business is in Montana. She lives in Washington and I live in Wisconsin. <laughs> so it's kind of confusing when we sure. try to deal with kind of the logistics of the That's business. Funny. Um, but yeah, it works. So was it, did you have to get there a few days early to set everything up? Or? Yeah, she uh, was around that area during mm -hmm. that time, my business partner. And so mm -hmm. she went there about a week early and got everything ready. And actually last year we did all the cooking. I should okay. say we. She did, she did the <laughs> most of the cooking. Okay. Um, so she had to get there early and meal prep a lot oh, of the sure. food and and like i said we learned a lot the first year and <laughs> one of the main things we learned is that we can't organize the whole thing offer what we offer and cook everything oh, sure. and be the mediators for every single thing going right. on you know right. if anyone had questions or needed something and but there was something happening in the kitchen and mm -hmm. i had to go pick up the rental car it was like only her and i sure and so we definitely um it went really well and we just learned a lot about how to make our budget and sure. how to um how to use our time wisely and this year we have a lot more time to prepare like it's happening in september and so we have you know what is it, nine months or sure. whatever and so we feel a lot more relaxed this nice. year we already have some people signed up so we're very cool we're happy that we have a lot more cushion this nice. year with with the sign up sure but it is a lot of work oh i bet i bet yeah. any any events is going to be a ton of work it's and a ton of work something halfway across the country you're just adding different hurdles i guess is what it comes down to right yeah and i think you've said this i think you said this in one of the classes i took with you that was um, something like it's easy to dream and oh, that really easy. stuck with me where people say you know dream big dream big chase your dreams and for me it's kind of like that's not really helpful because mm -hmm. it, dreaming is easy mm -hmm. right <laughs> like it's, Super easy. it's easy to be like I have all these great ideas mm -hmm. you know that's how I wake up every day and right. if I just got stuck there then nothing mm -hmm. would ever happen mm -hmm. you know it's all those little day-to-day -day steps that yeah. no one tells you how to put your nose to the grind mm -hmm. it's well people do but yeah right. i like to think <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah you do i'm pretty sure i have classes that are specifically <laughs> yeah. called nose to the grindstone right yeah but you're you're right a lot of people they have the whole inspirational you rah rah thing but right. a lot of people don't necessarily need help with you rah rah they need help just getting their butt in gear right and doing it you could probably argue the same with health Right. 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 So. And, and thinking it's going to be a certain way. You almost like can't have too many expectations, especially for a big event like mm -hmm. that. And an event where people are coming for different reasons. Like some people are coming for this kind of spiritual, you know, relaxing, mm -hmm. rejuvenating time. Other people are there because they want to work out hard. They're excited to be on vacation, but they sure. also want to do the fitness thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're or not so into the yoga stuff or it's totally new to them sure and so you have all these different personalities and different mm -hmm. reasons for joining a retreat and then when they all come together you never know like how can you prepare for that you can't prepare I don't for know, personalities. Good answer there <laughs> no right and so you sort of like you do all this preparing and then you just hope for the best mm -hmm. and hope that people get along and you know and so it almost makes it even more special when people leave saying that was amazing and the sure. friendships that are created you know mm -hmm. i feel like yeah we've somewhat facilitated it but mm -hmm. you can't force any of that that right. just has to happen organically and so absolutely um it, it's it's really like a special thing no that's baby. fair yeah. that's totally fair yeah that's interesting because i wonder you also have those clients that are going to be needy because right. they're away from home and away from maybe kids or family job whatever mm -hmm. and there's going to be others that are just totally going to be into it self-sustaining independent mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. And then I imagine you have to herd cats a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> telling them where to be or how to get them there. Mm -hmm. It's a new space. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you get a lot of challenges there. Definitely. It sounds like fun, though. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it definitely is. We also learned uh, people are not used to eating vegetarian. Oh. And, um, so this year we're trying to sort of figure out within our budget how to offer some meat. Sure. Um, but we like to be mostly plant-focused. Okay. But that was definitely a sure. challenge for a lot of people and we found that if you're going to eat mostly plant-based you still have to have a really rich diversity in sure. what you're serving because people get sick of beans <laughs> right. beans again and then their digestion's oh. not so sure. happy you know sure so um yeah you definitely learn so learn some things the hard way and gotcha um, so we'll get better every year <laughs> sure that's all right yeah learn as you go that's right. nothing wrong with that that's totally yeah. cool i imagine every person that's ever had uh, an event that they planned that has happened routinely is run mm -hmm. they've been in the same position right mm -hmm. where they had to just figure it out and then oh we got to learn figure it out move along mm -hmm. but by that time it's growing and the people that 
should have gotten in on the ground floor. <laughs> now it's too expensive for them or something like that. Right. It's so right. awesome, right? And it's such a unique thing that we're there with them mm -hmm. versus like running a retreat or running a workshop or something where I sure. organize it, but then I'm sort of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This is not that. You know, right. I'm, I'm the organizer, but also I'm the fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. And this year I'm stepping back quite a bit. I did quite a bit of the yoga okay. last year, and I found that to be challenging just do putting my fitness mask on oh, where I'm sure. the, I'm the, you know, instructor. I'm also kind of the mediator sure. and, and, um, giver of, you know, journal prompts and sure. things to think about all of these. And then at night being the yin yoga person is, sure. it was almost like two and maybe the, the client or the guests wouldn't have said this. Sure. Maybe it was more on, on, on me, but, um, you know, it's just hard to switch roles sure. and you're there so intimately with everyone else. You're eating mm -hmm. with everyone else. You don't get a spare minute to yourself. And sure. It's, you know, it's not for me. It's not my retreat, mm -hmm. but um, it's nice to have kind of your role and then hire out other experts sure. to do the their mm -hmm. expert thing. Mm -hmm. And and I think it makes it more special, too, to, for them, knowing sure. we brought in experts and we're excited to have a doctor um, and an oh, herbalist, really? like a naturopathic okay. doctor come in and, and do some of the self-healing workshops gotcha yeah. tell them to eat the beans right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. Just gonna tell Fun. them everything we're doing is wrong that's awesome so if somebody wanted to sign up where do they go um fitness by ariel.com okay. slash retreat okay that's ariel a-r-i-e-l a-r-i-e-l okay yep. and then we're on instagram at montana wellness retreat okay and what else? Facebook.com slash Montana Wellness Retreat. Awesome. Yep. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So now let's shift into the fitness stuff as a whole. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with all this? Well, I always grew up in an athletic family. So okay. I've always played sports growing up. My parents and my brother, we all competed in kind of everything growing okay. up. So fitness has always been a part of my life growing up. Mm -hmm. And so naturally when I got to college and um, was looking for kind of a part-time thing, the yeah. rec uh, director, recreation director said, you know, we're having this personal training class. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get certified, you could train here, you'd be great. And it was like, obviously I would do that. You sure. know, I was already teaching my girlfriends how to lift weights. Oh, nice. I would already kind of show my friends around the weight room. My mm -hmm. mom showed me around the weight room at a really young age. Oh, very cool. So, that was just a natural fit, and I've always been doing some form of personal training, group fitness mm -hmm. since then. So that was almost ten years ago now. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Nice. So. So you took the class. You got certified. Took the class. Got certified. Um, and then since then, you know, you have to always keep up your your credits, your mm -hmm. continuing education credits, they call them. And so. Over the years, I've done lots of other certifications to sort of develop my passions and what I like okay. to do. So that's where I got my spin. I got my yoga teacher training, my 200-hour um, a couple of years ago. And then I've done lots of, like, other little workshops, like a sculpt yoga training. Okay. Um, which is, like, yoga with weights. Oh, weird. Um, I've okay. done yin yoga, which is um, sort of like a different branch of, of yoga and philosophy. And, um, yeah, and then I've put on like various um, weight workshops and things mm -hmm. like that. So as I've grown in the fitness industry, I've worked at many different gyms, worked for many different people sure. and sort of honed down what my style is. Okay. And I think that takes some time. Sure. Um, you know, I've worked in the YMCA, I've worked in an Anytime Fitness, I've worked mm -hmm. in a lot of big box gyms, and mm -hmm. um, more recently I've started working in more boutique gyms that sure. offer kind of very specific programming or very mm -hmm. specific styles of group fitness classes. So I've okay. been able to see sort of different ways of running a gym, ones that have uh -huh. lots of members, ones where I have to get my own clients versus um, them just feeding me clients. Sure. So I've kind of been able to do a little bit of all of that. Sure. And now I'm in a place where I feel like I have a good, um, a good, um, foot in the ground where I, this is what I offer. This is mm -hmm. who I am. And sure. this is, um, you know, my style of training and mm -hmm. understanding too, that I'm, um, not going to be everyone's cup of tea sure. and that that's sure. okay. And I think mm -hmm. that's hard in the beginning. Anytime you just want to like, please, everyone and now right. i'm to the place where i'm kind of like this is what i offer as a personal trainer this is mm -hmm. what i specialize in and working with enough clients over time you get enough feedback from people sure. as to 
um, who you motivate and right. who you click with and mm -hmm. kind of who my clientele typically is. Okay. So is it tough to sell personal training to, I guess, no. the client that you want to work with? No? Okay. No. Okay. Because I, now it just <laughs> feels know. so natural okay. to me. You know, it's, um, and I, it, I always live, I live this life. Mm -hmm. I didn't. It's you do, like yeah, because you compete. Right, I compete, and and I still seek competition, mm -hmm. even if even if it's not bodybuilding. Like I still sure. seek that competitive edge. I like living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I like to talk, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know. And For, I, you're on the right show. I like to talk with people, <laughs> sure. you know. Uh, and so I I naturally just kind of live that life, and so then the people who who are drawn into that, mm -hmm. oh, it's easy because they say, hey, I see you're doing this. What? What do I need to do to do gotcha. that? Or I see your, okay. you know, I see you like to lift weights, and will you teach me how to lift weights? You know, or sure. I, you know, people get interested because you're living your passion. You know, sure. you're living what I love to do. So. so you're not having a cold call or anything like no, that. No, no cold calling. I didn't, I never knew. I've never <laughs> been a personal trainer, but I've always been curious because yeah. there seem to be quite a few of them around. Like, how do you guys grow your book? Do you just show up at a gym and just wait for somebody to grunt too loud? Or The best way to get clients as a personal trainer is word of mouth. Okay. And that's where I've gotten most of my clients. Nice. Okay. So it is hard in the beginning if you get in with a good gym space, which I've always kind of worked alongside a gym. So usually mm -hmm. you at least get some baseline flow of people who come in and say, I think I need a personal trainer. Who sure. should I go? And then they just you mm -hmm. get assigned someone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but you get one good person with a big family and then you get their sister and their friend and sure. their work buddies. Or um, when I have had to reach out, like when I do have a lot of open slots in my schedule and I feel like I could take on a few more people, mm -hmm. I'll reach out to um, places where some of my clients work if I know they work for a big company mm -hmm. and see if they would do a wellness day at lunch, um, mm -hmm. maybe like a short fitness break, or sure. just any way to kind of put myself out in the community and get people hearing my name gotcha. and knowing what okay. I'm doing. So. And you get you get a good agreement to that, doing the fitness days and all this jazz? Yeah, I mean, I'm starting actually this week at an apartment complex, a new apartment um, nice. that they just built, and they I kind of knew the gal who uh, runs their... I guess runs their marketing and stuff. Mm -hmm. and she, you know, brought it up that this would be a good idea, and so now I'm huh. I'm teaching four week series to sure. four week series to all of their tenants and sure, um, you know, and even through that you teach, you know, a class to ten people. Even if one of them comes right. in for personal training, it makes it worth totally it. worth it. Sure, yeah, right. That's awesome. And once my schedule fills up, I mean, I've gotten to the point a couple times this last few years where I'm full and oh. being able to just say like this is my max and if mm -hmm. I take on any more then I'm not offering the quality that I would like to offer sure. to the clients I do have and sure. just knowing kind of what's my mm -hmm. what's my max number where I'm comfortable and sure so here's an interesting point about capacity then because mm -hmm. realistically you could you're, you're essentially trading time for their time right so there's limitation there and you can't train 24 hours a day on a reasonable schedule. Right. So, but I imagine you also, you have to think and come up with workouts and stuff like this. So there's the volume of time that you have to actually devote to clients one-on-one -on -one gets pretty small, I imagine. Right. And when you think about it, I'm not getting paid for the time I spend writing workouts or right. the time I spend answering emails or right. the time I spend doing this outside marketing for myself. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, sorry, I can't pay you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and... The prime times for training, I mean, I've been waking up at four in the morning, you know, three to five days a week for the last few years. Sure, high five there. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. It's not, it's mm -hmm. like goals to not have to wake up at 4 a.m. Oh, I don't mind it. <laughs> you don't? No. You're used to it now. No, I'm so, like, it's quiet. There's no one around. <laughs> Just it's like before the rest of the world is woken up. Even squirrels aren't around, right? Okay, I'll think about that when so, I'm driving to work. And yeah, it's like <laughs> it's so relaxing. Oh, it is. It's so. Awesome. I even love like we have to travel to my wife's family or something like that. Uh -huh. I always say instead of going at Friday night, let's just go Saturday morning. <laughs> I wake up, you know, let's just get on the road at four in the morning and just head out because there's no one around. Mm -hmm. I love that just silence, right? It's just cool, or is this you and your mind? I love that. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. A certain my, type of person, I think. Yeah, like I didn't yeah. start out like yes, 4 a.m. Right, it started <laughs> like 
I'm going to wake up at, instead of six, I'm going to wake up at five thirty, mm-hmm. And then you start doing stuff and you're like, you know what? I want to do a little bit more. So let's just make it five fifteen, mm-hmm. and then five and four thirty, And then it just keeps growing. Eventually I said, okay, four, actually four ten. I'm like, that's anything before that, anything with a three, we shouldn't be waking up with a three Agreed. unless you're like a pilot or right. something like right. that. Right. Working third shift or something. Well, so I'm cool at four ten. But it's so cool. Well, most of the people, the general public, I mean, work, you know, normal working hours. So when do they want to train? It's before work or after work. Sure. So, you know, once I get to a full spot and I have a new client come in and they want to train after 5 p.m., it's kind of like, oh, you know, those are the prime times. It's when you get someone who comes in and builds their own schedule like me Mm -hmm. and says, I can train at one. You know, (laughs) (laughs) it's perfect. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Yes. Finally. I've been working so hard to fill this slot. Right, right. No, I suppose that's a challenge because then you're talking if you got to get a client started at 5 a.m. and you're also taking clients 5, 6 Mm p.m., that's Mm -hmm. a long day. It is. It's a very interesting schedule, but I get to go grocery shopping when no one else is there. I never have to sit in traffic usually because I'm there early hours in the morning Mm -hmm. and then I'm you know, usually at home to nap by 10 or 11 (laughs) a.m. Right. And then, you know, working sometimes three till seven or eight again. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is kind of odd hours and it's an odd schedule and it's constantly shifting because Mm -hmm. if someone gets sick or if, you know, I try to avoid the random gaps in my day. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like right when I get my schedule perfect and everyone's (laughs) back to back, you know, something happens. Someone else's schedule changes and then you have to move people around. So that's a big part of it, too, I think, anytime you run your own sure, show you sure. have to take that into consideration mm-hmm. is how to build your schedule and mm-hmm. you know no that's fair that's fair do people do they sign up for a year or a month or is it day to day or how do they um, how do the, agreements or contracts whatever you call them work yeah the gym i work for now mm-hmm. um custom fitness specialists mm-hmm. people usually sign up it's like a month to month membership mm-hmm. um which is kind of nice because they're not in a long-term contract. Mm-hmm. But it, so it's kind of like this perfect mix between um, small group training and personal training. It's more okay. like a personal training session, mm-hmm. but it's much more affordable because uh-huh. there's three or four people in class with gotcha. you. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but the nice thing then is that people pay for the whole month. Most of our clients typically come three to five days a week or five or oh, six nice. days a week, oh, um, wow. which All is right. what we want. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you don't. It's hard when someone comes in with personal training. It is more expensive, and typically, if people just meet me once or twice a week, they mm-hmm. they buy say a ten pack or a twenty pack. They only sure. want to meet once a week. Well, they should definitely be doing something outside on right. their own. Right. Um, so that's part of the other things we do um, through Custom Fitness Specialists is write ri- like written programs for people mm-hmm. to do on their own especially the people I only meet once a week. And mm-hmm. then others will do a mix of the small group classes and personal training. Gotcha. And especially in the beginning, once if they're very new, some people like to start out personal training sure. and kind of get their feet wet and learn mm-hmm. the correct form so that when they're in a class, mm-hmm. they feel like they're, they know what they're doing. But gotcha. The okay. nice thing about the small class sizes, too, is we don't have a ton of trainers working for us. There's a small, close-knit group of us. Mm-hmm. So the trainers get to know the people really well. And the people who come at the, generally the same times mm-hmm. get to know each other. So you kind of have your same few people oh, or your same sure. kind of workout buddies. So it's camaraderie. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Accountability, I imagine. Accountability, yep. So we, we know all of our clients very well. It's not like a group fitness class where you come in and hide in the back. Sure. Or you know, <laughs> Just, uh, go through the motions. Right. Uh, we're there to watch your, watch your sure. every move and make mm-hmm. sure we're checking your form and, mm-hmm. and things. So... Um, so it's a nice it's a nice mix that people can do a little bit of both if sure. they like. So. Nice. So what's what do you have planned for the future? Is the idea to keep doing retreats or is the idea to start your own gym? Yeah, I don't I don't think I wanna run my own gym. Okay, I've I don't never really you. been <laughs> interested in doing that. All right. Um I'll always have fitness be a part of what I do and sure. I'll always have personal training and group training and mm-hmm. um, classes to kind of fall back on but sure. um, I would love to have something more regular for myself mm-hmm. um, that is more along the lines of running retreats um, mm-hmm. running larger events sure um, potentially you know a whole retreat center that can also be you know multi-use space mm-hmm. for weddings or um, for different styles of retreats, maybe not fitness. Sure. Um, but ideally in a place where people also like to vacation. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. Um, 
yeah, so my plan is right now to move back to Arizona, where I'm from. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, northern Arizona is 30 mm -hmm. minutes from Sedona. It's driving distance to the Grand Canyon. It's two hours nice. from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a big vacation destination. It's so a it's a terribly ugly place. <laughs> Survive. Yeah, don't go there. It's, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just desolate. <laughs> it's sort of like the state of Colorado in a cool little mountain town in Arizona. Nice. You know, people think of Arizona, they think of like the desert and sure. it's dry and hot. but. Flagstaff, 7,000 feet in elevation. So, oh, wow. Um, but they actually have more snow than we do in Wisconsin right now. All my friends are skiing. So, uh. <laughs> You say that like it's a good thing, and I'm so glad we don't have snow. <laughs> but they can have it. But it's beautiful. It's not cold like here. It's not like chilling to your bones. Sure, but, you know, sure. So it's That's a nice fair. place to be. And I figure a place like that will obviously have um, more need for kind of like a destination. Sure. Like fitness retreat or any kind mm -hmm. of wellness retreat and things like that. So, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. How soon is that happening? Um, summer. Summer? Okay. <laughs> all right. So a few months. No James. hard plans. Yeah. Gotcha. No okay. Plans, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. That's, yeah. that's all good. Yeah. So I did want to ask you in regards to um, business, customers, and stuff like that. Since you're in the fitness industry, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I deal with a lot of different people that are starting businesses, I feel like I could learn something when it comes to client motivation. And I feel like that is something that you probably have to deal with every day. So can you tell the listeners about just how kind of the different types of motivation you see people have mm -hmm. or not have mm -hmm. and how you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I have been thinking about this a lot lately because I just ran a um, my first big online training program. Mm -hmm. I try to steer clear of that one because I don't love spending a lot of time online anyway so it's sure. just not something that comes natural to me okay um but also i'm not a cookie cutter type of trainer where sure. i'm like you know do this cookie cutter program sure it's perfect for you because i know not everything is right for everyone so i sure. don't really want to sell mm -hmm. anyways so this was the first online training program that was sort of like one it was through the holiday season mm -hmm. um it's actually just ending tomorrow um, and it was meant to kind of keep people motivated through the holidays. Okay. And, um, you know, it was really interesting. I, I sold it out. I took a max of 10 people, and I had 10 people sign up. And I would say, um, like, three or four of them really engaged with the group. <laughs> That's probably a good percentage. You know, it, it probably is. But it has me thinking, like, you know, what are people motivated by? And I know, like, I've joined these free online, like, habit changing a holiday thing sure. like the 90 day challenge whatever and i'm not motivated by sure. those things mm -hmm. and i i think they sound cool there's a lot of great information but at the end of the day a lot of those things feel like more work mm -hmm. and so for me as a personal trainer h how to get people motivated how if people feel good mm -hmm. or if they get that feeling that either that rush of endorphins or they leave going, you know, oh, I feel good, or I can feel my body in a way right. I couldn't felt before, that's going to stick more than, um, you know, I don't know, more than other things, like the sure. feeling you get in your body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it's tough. I, I obviously have lots of clients that are really regimen, really on a strict schedule. They're, they'll never cancel. I have clients who haven't canceled in years. Nice. Um, and then there's other people who cancel all the time, who sure. kind of phase in and out. And so everyone is different. Um, but I think at the end of the day, doing, like, figuring out what people like, mm -hmm. um, what people are struggling with, and mm -hmm. then, um, you know, kind of, like, where their insecurities are and kind of building them up, building sure. them up from there and giving them, mm -hmm. um, you know, breaking it down in a way that makes sense for them. Like, some sure. clients I have come in and they're all on board, and while it's very hard for them, they're, like, ready to learn something new. And sure. And they're, like, lay it out for me. What do I need to know? I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Other people, it's everything is over my head. The nutrition, I can't do the nutrition and the workouts all at once. Right. I can only do one thing at a time. Right. And so just meeting people where they are and, and realizing that I, whether I think they can do it, or not, mm -hmm. or what I think they're capable of or not, they need to be in charge of sure. setting their own goals. You can't tell someone what's important to them. Only How they do can. you not get so frustrated? Oh, I get really I frustrated. I would get so <laughs> frustrated. I'd be like, seriously, you Unless any of my clients are listening. I don't get frustrated <laughs> with you. <laughs> You're all great. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Way to save it. I just, I feel like if I had to do what you do, 
with people saying like I can't do nutrition and fitness like oh are you just not going to eat like people would be like well yeah I'm going to eat well great what are you going to eat mm-hmm. like you have to figure out what you're going to eat mm-hmm. so that's what I'm asking you to do is figure out what you're mm-hmm. going to eat mm-hmm. it's like tell me I can't breathe and eat at the same time mm-hmm. what's going to go on like are you well, Ugh, and then I get so frustrated so the nutrition thing is like a whole other animal right like sure. that it, there's so many different ways of first of all there's so many diets sure. and then even within what what my approach and our approach is at Custom Fitness Specialists is mm-hmm. kind of a flexible dieting approach, or if people have heard of macro counting, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of a step further than counting your calories. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a flexible diet plan. It's meant to be a lifestyle. It's not sure. meant to be a diet. It's meant to, it's meant to be kind of like a – gives you a roadmap mm-hmm. that you can come back to that puts you in line with your goals. It's sure. not an all or nothing. It's not a, um, you know – uh, an elimination you know you can't have it's not you can't have this you can't have that sure. you can it says you can have whatever you want within reason and sure. depending on what your goals are you'll have to make that more strict or you can make it more flexible and sure um but even that you know typically people use some sort of app or an online tracker mm-hmm. thing and for a lot of people they're i mean the whole technology thing is like way over their head oh, so how sure. do i reach them in a way that makes sense you know so i've had to write um more like handwritten or you know typed out sheets that they can fill in by Mm -hmm. hand Mm -hmm. um and so just developing that too like okay what is this person motivated motivated by what are they actually going to do and how do i make something up that makes sense to them Mm -hmm. uh, and gets them to stay to stay motivated sure and then also the challenging part is people set certain goals for themselves that i may not believe are realistic or oh. healthy okay. or doable sure you know but once again you can't tell someone what's important to them gotcha. or not. Sure. i want to lose five inches in five weeks kind of thing right but sometimes that's part of it too is is sort of helping them see the bigger picture and see like why weight might not be a good measuring tool for your progress sure and that i know you want to look a certain way and feel a certain way in your clothes Mm -hmm. and be strong and healthy and fit Mm -hmm. and why getting on the scale and measuring your weight won't be a good indicator of how all the all of those things are changing sure so being able to offer different ways of measuring their progress is Mm -hmm. really important that keeps them motivated you know for some people it's like stresses them out to the max to have to get on a scale and so they shouldn't get on a scale because <laughs> it, totally it doesn't fair. Really matter, you know. And if sure. you want to look a certain way in your clothes, I want to take a before and after picture. I might want to take measurements or mm-hmm. I might just want to, if you want to get stronger, we're just going to test your deadlift and then we're going to sure. test it again in six weeks and see how much more you can lift. You know, mm-hmm. so there's all sorts of ways to measure um, people's progress. You gotcha. Know? And, and some of those are more specific and others are just a little, a little bit more vague. Like I have a client who... Um, said she sat she sat up out of bed for the first time and realized she didn't have to roll over to the side like she had the core oh. strength just to sit up sure and she's like I didn't even think about that before mm-hmm. being an issue until I did it and mm-hmm. then realized how strong I felt and like that to me is it's way cooler sure. than getting on the scale and saying I lost five pounds Right. You know, you were, uh, <laughs> right. Being able to say I can reach my arms above my head now and straighten mm-hmm. them all the way and, mm-hmm. and reach higher. I mean, that's that's real life. <laughs> sure. Right. Right. <laughs> that's, usable. Right. Yeah. That's usable. That's mm-hmm. functional fitness. And so, um, you know, being being flexible and listening to people's goals is important, but then also offering your two cents on. Sure. You know having different ways of of tracking their progress and motivating them and you know but it is hard and it is draining and i have to keep my cup full Mm -hmm. um you know you can't give and give and give your cup full of motivation my cup full of motivation and energy and you know i'm giving i'm selling myself and giving myself Mm -hmm. all day to other people there's Mm -hmm. no being off there's no just showing up to work and kind of going through the motions sure you know people will notice that Mm -hmm. people will you know, it just doesn't feel good for anyone. So no, no, you I feel understand. It or not, you got to be on. Yeah, always on. I can. Yeah. That brings me to a, a story. I used to deliver milk for my dad, uh-huh. and I used to. Have to this was back when I was in college. I was driving a really heavy truck, uh, like I don't know, forty thousand pounds, something like that, mm-hmm. full of milk, and you had to take off at I don't know, it was three thirty four in the morning, something like that. And so it was Saturday that I had to deliver this stuff. So Friday night, you couldn't go out. 
you know, you're in the middle of college, but you can't go out because you have to go to work at 3.30 in the morning to drive this huge truck. Mm -hmm. And I remember making the mistake of going out the night before, and even though I didn't drink, I still, I was riding on a couple hours of sleep. And you're driving this truck with only a couple hours of sleep, and then you go to this grocery store to deliver, and I just, I messed up so many things, right? Not, I didn't get in car accidents or anything like that. It was just like I was knocked, I knocked over this, uh, this stack of milk or whatever. And it was just, it was a stupid mistake. On top of the fact it was a very skinny aisle, but in the end, I was the one that messed up. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this sucks, right? This is terrible. Because I got two hours of sleep, and I can tell, like, you're just making mistakes when you're that tired. Yep. And so I imagine when you're not motivated, and you're just like, just yeah. run. You learn the hard way. Lift something. <laughs> like, you can't do that. And the same story, you know? Like, sometimes I do want to go out, and, mm -hmm. you know, you work all day, and I work early in the morning, and even just not drinking but going out mm -hmm. it's hard to even catch up from that sure oh yeah because then i still have to nap and then i still have to write my workout it just all mm -hmm. gets backed up mm -hmm. you know it feels like everything is on a schedule and everything right. has to be followed to the t and if you miss one you're just kind of always behind right you know and if i know i'm going away for the weekend i got to prepare for that so oh, i don't sure. feel like you know i've got nothing to give i got to be ready to go monday morning mm -hmm. you know yeah, it's interesting. So you're, mm -hmm. it's 24-7 now for you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So do you ever have those clients that come to you and they're willing to pay and all that jazz, but they're just not putting in the effort? They're just kind of going through the motions just yeah. to say? So yeah. what do you do with those? Well, I just keep going back to, like, what is your goal? Okay. You know, like, I if my client is coming to see me once or twice a week mm -hmm. and doing – um nothing else outside of that mm -hmm. but then tells me their goal is weight loss mm -hmm. okay well we need to put you on a weight loss program mm -hmm. two days a week seeing me bare minimum is not what i would prescribe for a weight loss sure program. sure so just kind of coming back to reestablishing, like what is it your goal is what mm -hmm. is the plan to get there mm -hmm. and for some people they're like you know so stressed out with work so stressed out with home life barely making it through whatever their daily drama is sure and they're like i just need to work out twice mm -hmm. a week and mm -hmm. that's fine sure but you know just having them tell you know i need to hear that from from you my gotcha. client okay as to what your intentions are so i i try not to leave room for people to sort of not follow through with things and sure. then complain about not seeing progress gotcha you can't Right. Not follow the I plan. I used Ariel and it was terrible. <laughs> right. Right? So, so uh, hopefully that saves me and puts some responsibility on them. Mm -hmm. Or you know, it's okay. Not everyone has a weight loss goal, or not everyone has a you know specific athletic or aesthetic related goal. Sure. For some people, it's like I just need to de stress and like coming and working out, lifting mm -hmm. heavy things, and forgetting about work for an hour mm -hmm. is all I need. Great, perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. Um, and so. You know, I try and people are going to go through hard times and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, try to be flexible and open with them and, and um, letting them know that I'm here for them and, yeah. um, you know, pointing them in the right direction when they need it. That's mm -hmm. kind of part of the thing with personal training, too. I'm sure similar to hairdressers or other people. Sure. Too, is that you begin to be people's therapists a little bit or at least their oh, sounding board sure. for sure. a lot of things. And uh, knowing when to be their sounding board is fine. And then also knowing when to tell them. Uh, to see someone else for certain things gotcha. if, if it's outside of my scope of practice. Shut up, lift this heavy thing and see a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a life coach. Sure. I'm not, I'm not a therapist, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I can be here and I can listen. I can give my best advice, but at what point is it outside of my sure. scope of practice and right. outside of what I'm willing to give of mm -hmm. my energy? Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, um, taking classes on how to deal with certain sure. <laughs> extreme situations or, right. you know, what I would view as... I don't want liability in this <laughs> right, answer, like, so right, right. don't and ask then, me. Now that doesn't happen very often. And, and for the most part, I'm very I'm very close with all my clients. So we're sure. on, like, cool, you know, good mm -hmm. terms with everyone. And everyone mm -hmm. goes through hard times. But it's part of establishing that trust, too, is, um, you know, hearing them and knowing, knowing what stresses them out and sure. knowing... Um, you know the problems that they're going through and and that's really important because it does establish trust between the two of you and mm -hmm. um you know so that's how you establish any relationship All right. you gotta trust them that's yeah. true that's fair that's totally fair <laughs> yeah. it's interesting because i see i don't know i'm doing dealing with business coaching clients and a lot of them are extremely motivated and ready to work and they're doing the stuff and everything's cool mm -hmm. 
but I have some that, that's just like they're paying the bill. Some that are paying the bill. <laughs> some that's not motivated and not paying the bill and thinking out loud, like maybe I just got to let that guy go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you got some that are paying the bill, but they're not going through, they're not actually taking the steps that you're recommending. And so they're kind of, they're just at that square one, staring at square one. And I'm like, yeah, we got to go to step two. And they're like, great, see you next week. And I'll be like, yeah, next week, we, we still got to go to that step two. And they're mm -hmm. still just, uh, okay, that sounds great. And then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But they still go through the motions, still pay the bill. And I'm like, at what point do I say, you know what, I'm clearly not doing anything for you. I don't know what you need. I don't even know who to send you, but you got to take step two. You know what I mean? And I imagine that you have to deal with that on some, maybe even a greater level because it's so much broader with fitness and stuff like that. Yeah, it's different, and it's personal, mm -hmm. too. And sometimes it is, it's a personal, pro like, and even with you, you never know, like, what people's reasons are. And usually it's some sort of, like, fear-based thing. That's or, fair. That's or fair. insecurity that you might, that might be so beyond what you even thought it could be. And I think mm -hmm. just coming back to them and asking them to tell you you know sure i've told you five times to go mm -hmm. to step two right I'm still not going to step two why do you, what do you feel like you need from me in order to uh -huh. help you get to step two that's fair that's fair and so asking them you know and putting it on them like i'm here for you this is what i offer mm -hmm. what is it that i can do better to get you there and then you know, normally it's them being like, no, no, I just need to get my <laughs> button gear. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. <laughs> right. right. Nice. So, so in the past few years that you've been doing personal training, what are some things that you've learned that you didn't anticipate either needing to learn or having to learn? <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, different populations of people. Mm-hmm. Um, responding differently to different forms of exercise. Like I said, the different um, ways of tracking food and talking about food. Mm -hmm. People have a lot of, and depending on where, this is really interesting, depending on where I've trained in the country mm -hmm. and how people grew up has a big effect on what they think about food. Really? And what they think about their bodies. Oh okay. yeah, like places that are typically more, more fit, you okay. know, clients are, Clients, more of my clients in that sphere are, you know, not overweight, but looking for that edge of, okay. oh, I want to see my muscles, I want to be sure. leaner, you know, but they're decent, what I would say are decently fit versus other parts of the country where mm -hmm. I have more people that are weight loss clients. Not only do I need, want to lose weight, but I need to lose weight for health reasons. Sure. You're talking Wisconsin skinny. You know? <laughs> Wisconsin skinny. Exactly. <laughs> it's only 80 so, pounds overweight. I think something that you don't get experience with in schooling or I guess in the classes and certifications I've taken is like that real life experience of how to talk to different people oh, with sure. different, um, different backgrounds mm -hmm. and different goals and mm -hmm. um ones that i haven't you know just new people who i haven't sure. had experience with and until i have uh -huh. you know meeting them there and mm -hmm. all a lot of that is really learn as you go i mean you and some things you haven't learned anything too much the hard way knock <laughs> on wood but you know i've learned what ways of communicating are more effective sure. than others with different types of people and you have to kind of if i see eight different clients mm -hmm. throughout a day that's eight different masks sure. kind of and eight different not masks but eight different ways of communicating right, you have to and alter you have to tweak kind of your, per, different your personality. personality yeah yeah you 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 act differently around your friends as right. you do your parents as mm -hmm. you do your kids and sure you know so it's the same type of thing um so i've just learned a lot through through doing mm -hmm. um and then i've also learned that i don't like to teach many things that are dance focused <laughs> oh that came straight <laughs> like, out of left field yeah well i've learned a lot of things and is that a, is that a thing with fitness uh, yeah, i don't like know zumba classes or okay. anything like choreographed to the beat of the music sure um you know, a lot of the Les Mills classes, things like that. And okay. I've taken different types of certifications and had lots of opportunities to take. Um, I've, I've taken a few uh, sort of like branded, mm -hmm. um, branded workout classes. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't name them, but, sure. um, you know, and just learning things from them and realizing that's not my style, okay. <laughs> you know, and that's not. 
uh, it feels like if I were to teach your brand mm -hmm. that I would be being inauthentic to myself sure. because then I'm teaching your brand standard and not Ariel as a fitness instructor. Sure. And I, I actually just up, um, just applied and interviewed for a, a job in town teaching it at one of the new kind of boutique sure. um, group fitness studios. And I actually auditioned twice. And that was one of the things they said is, uh, you seem to have a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. You seem like a great teacher, but we can tell that you haven't taught brand like corporate sure. style classes. Mm -hmm. And, and I would agree. And, um, you know, and then I thought about it and I'm like, I don't, it's not a bad thing necessarily. It's not a bad thing. And if I were to get more into the corporate corporate world with fitness, then I'm kind of losing what makes me me as fair. a trainer. Totally fair. And so I've sort of learned like that that's a no for me, mm -hmm. that I'm not going to go that route. Sure. Um, and nor do I want to start my own brand mm -hmm. that forces other trainers or instructors to sure. teach the aerial method. Right. Because the aerial method, that's awesome. I think it's just important to know what you offer as a person and mm -hmm. why and how people connect with you authentically. Um, and granted, there's some great corporate boutique studios out there, mm -hmm. and many of which I like to go to, and the workouts are really fun. Sure. But when it comes to personal training, and, and it's it's personal because it's you, not because sure. it's you know a big corporation that tells you this is how you need to test people this is what you need to say this is what you need to look oh, like sure this is how you need to act mm -hmm. you know it just feels really inauthentic sure that's fair to me and so mm -hmm. interesting i just learned a lot about that my what what is me and what is my own authenticity this all stems from your hate of techno right hate of techno techno house music whatever they call it now <laughs> <laughs> the, stuff I hate beat. the stuff i hear in the mall i don't know <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, what have been some of your biggest challenges in dealing with clients and selling in any way? Biggest challenges have definitely been switching gyms that I work oh, out of. Okay. Um, it gets tricky in any town, but especially, and Madison's a big city for me, but Madison I know is like sure. small for most mm -hmm. people. And right. it, it is small, it's a small fitness community. Mm -hmm. Most people know each other a lot of the big teachers and gym owners they know each other sure um switching focuses as a trainer switching locations and switching gyms mm -hmm. is really tough because how do you balance you know you don't want to pull your clients out of someone's gym mm -hmm. but your clients want to follow you sure and that puts a strain on relationships and sure. you know I'm a person who doesn't want to burn bridges and mm -hmm. I and I I want all fit I think all fitness people if they have something good should have room to succeed sure. because people need fitness and health and anything if anyone loves it and it mm -hmm. gets them working out and it gets them healthy and and fit and it gets them moving mm -hmm. then I think that's great and I hope that they're successful and I would never sure. wish ill on anyone mm -hmm. um but with that said, it's it's still there's been some tricky situations when you switch gyms, and um, or when or when clients want to leave or, or clients have internal issues within uh -huh. other people or, or sure. um, other trainers or things, mm -hmm. and it just gets sticky. And um, so that's been kind of on the business side of it, okay. really challenging. Sure. Um, and then I'd say. On a personal level, um, um, like I said, just working with like a different uh, variety of populations. A personal struggle was could doing my own competitions, bodybuilding competitions, and training at the same time. Training, like um, doing personal training. Doing personal training. So okay. I also had a bit of an overlap a year or two ago with um, I was coaching. Um, I had coached a few gals through their own bodybuilding season while mm -hmm. also sort of entering and exiting my own season. Sure. And that was really, really challenging. Okay. Um, Did you end up competing against them? Not against them. There okay. was a show or two where we were in the same show, but never against them. I was sure. at a pro level at that, at that time. So I had no one okay. else on my team. Sure. I was competing against. Um, but just balancing that, um, you know, it's hard to go through that intensive prep sure. and 
talking someone else through it while still maintaining your composure is sure. very challenging. All right. Um, and so that proved to be really tough. And that's another thing I learned that I, that is not something I prefer is, is bodybuilding coaching. And, really? Um, really. And oh, it's something I was going I, off the assumption that that was your aim kind of. No, I mean, you know, and I, I've competed on and off for the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. And, um, my coach back, uh, home in Flagstaff, she owns her own gym, uh, build your own body and Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she's also a former competitor. And so between her and my mom who used to compete, they kind of introduced me to that industry. And sure. so I've always kind of been involved in it. And I've had some friends who compete and help them with posing or, mm -hmm. um, kind of dabbled in it. And it wasn't until I started working for Lisa, custom fitness specialist that I really, um, Tr did it it did, mm -hmm. did someone's entire prep sure with the workouts and the nutrition and all of that as mm -hmm. her kind of as my mentor sure and it, it was tough and I think I did a good job I mean my um both my clients did great one of my clients had an undefeated season so no, I call that a win that's I mean, totally a win that, I mean obviously it was all her hard work but just to say that I coached her through that was sure. a really, really um special thing for her and and mm -hmm. for myself and um but realizing that that's not so much my focus and, okay um you know it's a bodybuilding is a very personal thing for for me and and i like to be part of other people's journeys and i like mm -hmm. to be helpful and mm -hmm. i like to be um be someone that someone can talk to about the hard times going through sure. that but i don't like to be the one inflicting the hard times oh. on them <laughs> as the coach <laughs> You know at, what I mean? at that level, you can see when they made a mistake, right? Right, well, right, and and it's t I mean, it's tough to get low to that kind of body fat. That mm -hmm. kind of things that come up mentally for people. I mean, that's they don't. There's no handbook on how to sure deal with those mm -hmm. issues as mm -hmm. they come up. And and I like to be the one who can be there for them, but not the one who's creating the, you know <laughs> writing them the plan that's sure. getting them to this challenging right. places and i totally respect and honor all of my coaches and the people who write that because it takes a certain type of person to be available like that to all of mm -hmm. their clients but detached enough to say this is what i offer this is what i don't you know what you're getting into this mm -hmm. is what it is and she's been doing it for so long lisa has that she um has had she's been through the ringer with sure. so many people that she sort of knows the ins and outs of different types of gotcha. people and personalities okay. and what to expect. And so perhaps if I gave it more time, that mm -hmm. would be something that I would learn to. Sure. Um, but it's just not what I'm passionate about. That's fair. That's totally right fair. Now, you know, and it's, it's not what lights me up, lights me up, you know, from the inside and sure. running my retreat really did that for me. And that's how I know, okay, this is something I need to move, lean in, lean in towards. Nice. So is the the plan is to push more retreats or to create yeah, more so retreats? Yeah, so we're running our retreat next is this coming September and we're running it for 2 weeks. Okay. Um so we have two different options for people to sign up. Sure. And then moving forward looking at the potential of running um one out of the country like a destination retreat. Oh, really? Um yeah, I mean, you know, like a beach kind of beach sure. retreat something like that. Mm -hmm. Um and then hopefully ideally opening up my own retreat center and um you know, nice. Doing more things like that. So. Cool. In Arizona. In Arizona, hopefully. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or who knows? Whatever the future brings. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Ariel, this has been super cool. Yeah. It's been enlightening. I love Thank talking you. about people and motivation. Yeah. Thanks lifting for lifting weights. <laughs> I, there, every once in a while, I come across people that make me feel out of shape. <laughs> so I apologize to feel out of shape next to you. <laughs> Most people, I don't. They're Wisconsin skinny, so it's all good. No but judgment. <laughs> no secrets judgment. Secrets all <laughs> This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land, coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kateman, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country, on the web at callsoncall.com as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business, on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Ariel Mirendorf of Fitness by Ariel. Ariel, can you tell us your website one more time? Yeah, it's fitnessbyariel.com. Fitnessbyariel, that is A-R-I-E-L.com. Awesome. 
Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunprairiemediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link. Found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. <laughs>